Thank you, Acting Deputy Speaker. Um, this period of the coronavirus, the COVID pandemic, has seen medical workers working 24-7, doctors, nurses. Um, we've seen pharmacists um, staying open to make sure people get the medicines they need. We've seen um, people who uh, work in pathology work shift after shift after shift to make sure that COVID tests can be processed swiftly. You know, we have seen politician after politician stand up and thank the heroes of the pandemic, the people on the front line, the people that are the last defence, the medical profession, the scientists, and we rightly thank them. But we need to do more than just thank these people. We need to back them in. Many people today will say um, how amazing the TGA is and how crucial that it has been and continues to be to our health system in Australia, and that is absolutely right. We have an obligation to do more than just congratulate the um, scientists and the administrators that work at the TGA. We need to back them in. We need to support what they're doing. And we need to back in the Australian people who have sacrificed so much in the last 12 months to be behind their state and federal governments to suppress the virus, that haven't been able to see family and friends, that have missed weddings and funerals and birthdays, that have had to talk to grandparents through windows at aged care facilities, that haven't been able to leave their house for more than an hour in a day so that we can suppress the virus and save lives. We owe it to those people to do everything that we can to make sure that our community has confidence in the vaccine. We know that a proper rollout of the vaccine and penetration of the vaccine through the community is what we have to achieve to be able to carry on with suppression of this virus. And we know that the best way to protect the economy is also to deal with the virus. And that is why it is so disappointing to see a prime minister and a health minister and members of the government who I know are outraged by what they see the member for Hughes saying on social media and mainstream media interviews. To see all of these people just let him go. The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. And for too long, for far too long, the Prime Minister of this country has walked past the outrageous behaviour of the member for Hughes. For too long, the Prime Minister of this country has let outlier backbenchers in his government daily go about undermining the work of our public health officials, of the chief health officers and chief medical officers of this country. And it has to stop. Why is it that the member for Hughes felt empowered to go on a podcast with Pete Evans? Why is it that he feels empowered to go on the news and say that it's his right to undermine the efficacy of the vaccine? It's because the Prime Minister walks past and turns a blind eye to what the member for Hughes does, and he's undermining public health, and he's doing a disservice to every single person in this country. We cannot have a member of this parliament elected to be a leader spreading anti-vaxxer, conspiracy, anti-health theories and have the medical practitioners, let alone the prime minister of the country who are in the government, do nothing to stop it. It is a disgrace. And the free speech warriors in this government who like free speech when it's people that they think are on their side, but hate it every other time, appear to think that free speech applies everywhere in this parliament, because they even gag debate on whether the member for Hughes should be pulled into line by the Prime Minister and stop his dangerous actions. It being 7.30pm, I propose the question that the House do now adjourn. And I call